Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Greg. This is Lunchtime with the Lord, our daily Bible study. And I uh, trust that your day is going well on this Thursday. And hopefully everything's going well with you and your family. I want to say thank you for uh, uh, choosing to spend some time with us. And I invite you to, uh, to stay with us, watch the rest of the video as we uh, have a short Bible study uh, from our current Bible study series uh, through the book of 2 Thessalonians. And if you've been watching our videos, you know that we're starting the very last chapter today, chapter number three. And we're going to be at verse number one, give you a moment to find your place in your Bible. If you're able to get your Bible out where you're at uh, as you watch the video. Like always, we ask you to comment. Let us know who's watching. Uh, share the video if you're on our Facebook page watching these videos. And uh, that allows other people the opportunity to tune in and watch. And also... If you're on our YouTube uh, channel watching this, uh, you can also just comment, let us know who's watching. And uh, thank you for uh, choosing to, uh, to spend some time as we study the Word of God together. Now, if you watched yesterday's video as we uh, uh, finished up chapter number two, uh, you'll remember uh, that uh, the Apostle Paul had uh, some prayer requests, uh, or I should say he had uh, told them that he had prayed for them. And there was a few things there uh, that we talked about concerning his prayer uh, for the believers at Thessalonica. And uh, we, we talked about how they were spiritual in nature and to comfort your hearts, that God would comfort their hearts, that God would encourage them, as we've seen in verse number 17, and that God would establish them in every good word and work, or he would establish them, he would strengthen them. And so there were really uh, two prayer requests that he was praying for, the uh, church at Thessalonica, uh, two petitions, I could say it that way, uh, in his prayer for them. And it was one to comfort and one to establish them. Now, as chapter three opens up, prayer, the subject of prayer continues, but it, it, it switches from what he's praying for uh, concerning those believers at Thessalonica. In, in chapter three, verse one, we find the apostle Paul is requesting prayer for himself that they would pray for him. You see this partnership in prayer. Uh, the Apostle Paul was praying for the church at Thessalonica, and he's requesting that the church at Thessalonica pray for him. And so we'll read verse number one together today, and uh, we'll uh, kind of glean from it what Paul was uh, praying for or asking for a prayer request. And, and that theme will continue over the next few verses as as we continue on oh, tomorrow's uh, edition of Lunch Time with Lord, Lord Willing. Uh, but let's read verse number one together as Paul is requesting for prayer. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. A couple things about this verse of scripture. First of all, it is the Apostle Paul requesting, as I've already said, prayer uh, for himself, for his ministry. Now, uh, many of us would uh, characterize the Apostle Paul as one of the greatest Christians that's ever lived. Of course, he was an apostle. God used him to write much of the New Testament. And yet here he is, the great apostle Paul, requesting prayer uh, for or from those Christians at Thessalonica. Uh, as chapter 2 closed, he was praying for them. Chapter 3 opens, he wants them to pray uh, for him and his ministry. Uh, the, uh, the truth of the matter is this partnership, it, it was very vital not just with the believers at Thessalonica, but for all believers that Paul had contact with and had an influence over and with, that this prayer partnership uh, was uh, something that uh, that existed, that, uh, that strengthened. Uh, we know there's power in prayer, and it would have been encouraging for those believers to hear Paul's uh, prayer for them, but now he's saying, pray for me. He, need, he needed prayer. The truth of the matter is none of us get to the point in our life that we don't need prayer. No ministry uh, gets to the point or arrives to the point uh, that it's self-sustaining outside of God's power in him working. And so Paul requested prayer. Now, what specifically did he want them to pray for? Well, we're going to look at one of those things in verse number one. And he said, pray this way. Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course that the word of the Lord may have free course as it was with you and be glorified even as it is in with you. Uh, we've talked about this several times in these studies, these uh, videos that the church at Thessalonica, Paul spent three Sabbath days, according to Acts chapter 17, teaching and preaching 
uh, the word of God to them. He taught them many things uh, in that short time that he was there before he was forced out because of persecution. Now, they received the word of God. He commended them in other scriptures about how they received the word of God. Now, in verse number one, he said, I want you to pray for my ministry. Pray for us. Pray as we give the word of the Lord out that that word of God would have free course and it would be glorified in others as you it had been glorified in you and it, it, that it would be received in others as it had been received in you. The message, the message, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God, that it would be honored and glorified in his ministry. Now, certainly any ministry that is going to, go, going to glorify the Lord will honor and glorify his word. The word of God is very important. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians or claim to even be ministers of the gospel that have uh, strayed away and rejected the Bible, the word of God. But any ministry that's, or any person, any ministry, minister, Christian, whatever, that's going to please the Lord, glorify Christ, will also honor his word, will also honor his word. So Paul is asking that the word of the Lord may have free course, that it would have free reign, that it would... Uh, that it wouldn't be hindered as he in the propagation of the word of God that it uh, that it would be honored that it would be glorified and uh, as it is it is with you he's saying that what had transpired at Thessalonica how you received the word of God as I uh, preached and taught uh, the word of God to you uh, pray that that happens in other places where he's ministering uh, that God's word would have free course what a wonderful prayer request for your church uh, that God's word would have free course, not only in the church, in the community, but in your own heart, uh, that God's word would have free course, that it would be glorified in you. And uh, so oftentimes it's uh, the word of God, sadly to say, is dishonored in many, uh, in many places where it ought to be honored. But Paul said, this is a great prayer request. Well, that, there's power in the word of God. Uh, the power uh, of, of God's word is, is very important in the ministry. And so Paul said, please pray, pray that it have free course, that it have free course. That, And as we're going to see in verse number two, tomorrow he's going to pray that uh, others wouldn't hinder it, uh, that there's people that would hinder that. And of course, anytime the message of the gospel, the, the word of God is a given, Satan, of course, opposes that and will stand in opposition as he did in the city of Thessalonica. They understood about opposition because they faced it. But verse number one, we'll stop there. He just had a prayer request that God's word would have free course. Now let me ask you uh, two things. Number one, do you pray that way for your church, uh, for the church services, whether it be Sunday school hour, that the word of God's taught, or whether it's uh, the worship hour where the preacher is preaching the word of God, do you pray that God's word would have free course? Uh, that there would be nothing hindering it, that God's word would would impact lives. We understand it's it's quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And secondly, do we pray, do we have the desire that it would have free course in our lives, that it would be glorified in our lives? And and so uh, the twofold challenge, just pray that God's word would be magnified in all the ministries of your church, my church, our churches, and but also that it would be uh, have free course in our own lives and that we receive it uh, as the Thessalonians uh, did as well. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday today. And uh, Lord willing, uh, we shall see you tomorrow on Friday as we close out another another week in this Bible study. Uh, so hopefully see you tomorrow, Lord willing, on Friday's edition of Lunch Time with the Lord. God bless you.